And just like that, we are recording another video. This time I'm doing it off of my computer. And I just want to come to you and just let you know that today's reading is coming from 1 Corinthians 15. In my last video, I shared that the video for 1 Corinthians 15 is going to be a three-part series. Just because there's so much packed into this. Uh, the second part is on verses 12 through 34 and as you know there that that is a very large amount of scripture here but i do want to share that i had to use different versions of the bible just to help me even understand what it was saying now i do want to say that if something i say does not sound right please send me a message and i will try to get back to you as quick as possible I am a human, I do make mistakes. Also, you may have a different understanding of the scripture than what I do. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, I don't want to read all the scripture because there's so much here, but I promise I did read it beforehand. I just want you guys to read this on your own time and just please take your time and actually um, let me know what you think. Verses 12 through 19, we kind of see that as some people will say, some say people will not be raised from death. But sadly, if that is true, then Christ was not raised from the dead. As we will go into this video, you will see that there's so much proof of God being alive. And I want you to understand that. So, this leads into, if Christ was not raised from the dead, then our preaching is not worth anything. And your faith is not worth anything. Verse 15 talks about we would be guilty of lying about Christ if he was not raised. And verse 17 talks about if Christ has not been raised, then your faith is for nothing and you are guilty of your sins. Also, those who died are lost. But, see, the video doesn't end there. The scripture doesn't end there. And I want to go on to verses 20 through 34. As you can tell, that is a bulk of this scripture today. And I want you to understand that Christ has risen. Christ is no longer dead. Verse 20 talks about this being proof that those who are asleep in death will be raised. I have another camera going and I don't like the quality of it right now. So I'm trying to fix it real quick. That's why I need a camera crew. Alright, but... <clears throat> We will all face death, and in our lives, we will all face death and sin. And truthfully, we need to get into this because we see the sin in the garden. Adam and Eve eating from the tree. You see, in verse 22... It says, in Adam, all of us die. In the same way, in Christ, all of us will be made alive again. But everyone will be raised to life in the right order. Christ was first to be raised. When Christ comes again, those who belong to him will be raised to life. 
But it doesn't end there. You see, you see, in verse 24, it says, Then the end will come, and Christ will destroy all rulers, authorities, and power. Wow, wait a second here. There's a speaking to me really hard right now. But it goes on to say, And he will give the kingdom to God the Father. Verse 25 says, Christ must rule until God puts all enemies under Christ's control. The last enemy to be destroyed will be death. The scripture says, God put all things under him and it is, cl it is clear that this does not include God himself. So God is the one putting everything under Christ's control. So we talk about the Holy Trinity, and this is talking about the three different beings in this scripture. You have Father, and you have the Son, and you have the Holy Spirit. And after everything, after this video, we will break this down more as we continue on. But t just listen and see if you can figure out where... Father, Son, and Holy Spirit comes to play. So verse 28 says, After everything has been put under Christ, then the Son himself will be put under God. God is the one who put all things under Christ. And Christ will be put under God, so that God will be the complete ruler of over everything. So God the Father is in control. But this will only happen through the Son. We were all dead before our baptism. We were all dead before our life in Christ. Through baptism, we see the old is gone and the new is born. As I was getting ready to leave church the other day, I heard one of the pastors come up and say, we have a few baptisms that we will be doing today. And I'm reminded, some baptisms are not done publicly but it's between them and God and their family. Sometimes they don't have family and that is totally fine. You see, after everything has been put under Christ, then the son himself will be put under God. So God is the one who put all things under Christ. We are all reborn. If you believe in the Father. Let's go on to verse 29 here. It says, If the dead are never raised, then what will people do who are baptized for those who have died? If the dead are not raised at all, why are the people baptized for them. That is out of the ICB Bible. The NIV version of verse 29 says, Now if, the, if there is no resurrection, what will those do who are baptized for the dead? If the dead are not raised at all, why are people baptized for them? Again, that was the NIV. In LT says, If the dead were not raised, what point is there? What well, is people being baptized for those who are dead? Why do it unless the dead will someday rise 
again. I find it interesting that these three different versions of this Bible uh, say things in a different way, but still similar. This goes on to say, what about us? See, verse 33 out of the International Children's Bible reads, Do not be fooled. Bad friends will ruin good habits. Have you heard the saying that you become what or who you are around? Sadly, this is the truth. It is hard to bring someone out of the darkness when you dive into the darkness with them. So temptation is real. And sadly, it is easier for others to pull you down compared to you bringing them up or building them up. In verse 34, it says that, we need to stop sinning and come back to the right way of thinking. The part that crushes me is the second part of the verse. I say this to shame you. Some of you do not know God. Just going to church doesn't make you magically a Christian. Again, just going to church doesn't make you magically a Christian. Just going to church doesn't make you magically a Christian. It is through the relationship with the Father. We will go deeper into this verse on a later video. But I do want to encourage you all to read this scripture and do your own research. Do not let me be your Bible. I am not the Word of God. This is the Word of God. The Bible is the Word of God. And I want you to get a Bible and to read it. And I want to go on to say... that the Bible will read you. It will change you. Let it change you. As I wrap up this video, because it's a little longer than I wanted, I want to say, remember, that there is more to come. Wednesday is Ash Wednesday. And this is just the beginning of a, a new thing not really new thing, but a part of the Christ story that we cannot forget about. And I'm hoping to do a video about Ash Wednesday also. And I'll be posting it. But the story of Christ has not ended. It has not come to an end, and it will not until the end of time. And something I want to point out here is that we will all face death in our lives, but we as Christians have to die from our old ways to be reborn into the family of Christ. Going to church doesn't make you a Christian. It takes a relationship. Be careful who you are around. Because who you are around does change you. As I was doing some study here, one of my favorite YouTubers have a brand called Think Positive. And I love the message behind this because he always ends the videos with what you think about, you bring about. 
through some other research, I found out that that is actually a, a famous person that actually said that. And I should have included her. I think it's her name in this video, but I did not. But check out Chase Gilroy on YouTube or on his fan page on Facebook. He's starting to do shorter videos and just gets right to the point. It is great family content. But what you think about, you bring about. Think positive. And I want to share this. Read the word. Learn the word. Live the word. And go out and share the word. That is the great commission fulfilled into the nations. And right now we need to definitely be praying. Switching to another camera here. We definitely need to be praying for the nations around the world. I don't want to get caught up on this, but please pray for your leaders. Pray for the countries. Pray for the friends. Pray for just religion around the world. Pray for the lost. Take a moment and just pray for the ones. Pray for the ones who need you. Well, who need the Father? They don't need us. They need the Father. I'm going to end in a prayer here. So, Father God, just thank you for just giving me this opportunity to just share this video on um, just on this platform that it can go all over the world. Father, I pray for the souls to just be brought into a deeper relationship with you. Father, I pray that what is being said in this video, what I shared, that this is not my words, but it is your words, and that the message does not go unheard. I pray that people hear you and not me. I pray that people dive deeper into your word. And they truthfully re not only read the word, but they learn the word, they live the word, and they share the word. Maybe it's not in their words, but maybe it's in their actions. Maybe it's at work. Maybe it's just everywhere they go. Father, I can't get out of my mind. A friend ran a 5K the other day and... On her shirt, it was talking about you. Father God, I pray that you do not let us be ashamed of the gospel and that we go into these nations and into this mission field of the world. Everywhere we go, we are not afraid to share the gospel. Father, thank you for this opportunity. And I pray that if somebody needs well, if today's someone's day of salvation, that they find the right church and that you lead them to that to this church and that it be ordained by you. And Father, I pray for the souls. Father, I pray for our brothers and sisters in Ukraine right now that they're just their lives right now are just crushed. But Father, I pray that this that they do not lose faith and they dig deeper and deeper into your word and that they see nation their nation transformed. Now, Father, I pray for the leaders around the, word, the world that people do not forget to pray for the leaders. But Father, I pray for the leaders right now that they make the right decisions. Father, we love you and we thank you for this opportunity. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.